let's go ahead and start out by going over what makes up a polygon and what the fundamental difference is between uh, polygons and NURBS and subdivision surfaces. We're not going to cover NURBS or subdivision surfaces in this lesson, but we can talk a little bit about just what the difference is and uh, we'll be able to see that uh, once we start working with the polygon. So let's go up to create down a polygon primitive and then cube. Um, before you select the cube, make sure that interactive creation is turned off. That way Maya will generate the uh, cube around the origin. So go ahead and select cube. And now that we have the cube here, let's see what the components of this cube are. So we see right off the get-go we notice of course there's faces. So the polygon is made up of faces, vertices, and edges. If we hover over the polygon and hold right click, you'll begin to have a series of options that will allow us to select different components. So if we hold over at vertex, you notice that all the vertices are now highlighted purple. Let's go ahead and turn off the grid actually. So go under lighting in the menu bar in this little grid or go up to display and uncheck the grid. So we see here as you can highlight if you marquee over this you, you notice that the vertices are being selected but you actually are not selecting the polygon object you're selecting the component so when you try to move this you're moving each one of the components you have selected if we hover over and hold right click again we go up to edge you notice if you move around whenever you land on top of an edge it highlights red same thing, so if we do a marquee and we select a couple of edges and we go to move, we're going to move that edge only. If we hover again and go down a face, we have access now to the polygon faces. So fundamentally this is different than nerves, for example, because here we have local access to, we can subdivide this as many times as we want and still have access to, for example, something like this, and still have access to each face individually and locally, as well as the vertex of each face, if we go hover vertex, and the edges. Uh, this is different, of course, than if we had nerves, for example, as, since nerves are made up of UVs, UV coordinates, we wouldn't have local access uh, and have the ability to start deleting faces, uh, rerouting each of the edges as we saw fit. So we're going to spend a bit more time talking about NURBS and SUBDs in, in another lesson, but for now we're just going to talk about uh, polygon geometry. So let me go ahead and undo this and go back to where everybody is. So before we get into talking about creating uh, polygons from scratch, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. But for now, let's talk about just focusing with the primitives. Let's talk about how to change basically what makes up the number of divisions, the, you know, if we wanted to change the height, the length, or anything along those lines. Um, we can go over to our inputs, and we can select the polycube one, which is our creation node. And because our history hasn't been deleted yet, we're able to go in and make changes to the, for example, subdivision width, height and depth. So if you click and drag over these and you can hold the middle mouse button outside and drag left to right, you can interactively change the number of subdivisions that are making up this cube. You could also click and highlight and just type a number and this will change the number of subdivisions. So if we had five for example and I wanted to go and select the face then I can start having access to uh, this information here and at the same time being able to go back and change it uh, if we notice we don't want that many subdivisions. However, once you've made a change, if you've already altered the way the geometry uh, is in comparison to when it first came in and you try to go back into your inputs and change the subdivisions, you won't be able to do that as well as uh, any of the width, height, and depth. So just make sure that the changes that you make, you do them before you start uh, any sort of editing in the polygon itself. So I undid, and I'm going to go ahead and just set this back to one. Uh, another way that 
you could specify this from the creation aspect. You would just go up to uh, create, polygon primitive, and then in the cube you would open the dialog box. Let me go back up. Any little rectangle to the right um, is a dialog box window that opens up. And so in the polycube options here you can see before you actually create it you can specify the width, the height, depth, subdivisions, levels for uh, any axis specifically. Um, and it's created again. So let's look at another way to uh, create geometry and let's go up to the plan, the top view. Hold the hotbox and go to Maya, top view. And I'm gonna make uh, just a reference curve that we can follow. So I'm gonna go up to create, CV curve tool. And I'm just gonna draw in a curve, just a guideline. And I'm gonna put it in this layer. Call that curve. And I'll just reference it. Actually, no. I'll, uh, I'll template it. So if we go up to Mesh under Create Polygon Tool, actually go back up and open the dialog box. There's going to be an option for limiting the number of points. We always want to make sure that this is set to 4. Because Maya doesn't really like working with what are called n-gons, which is uh, more than four-sided polygons. So by limiting the number of points, we'll always uh, create a quad. I'm just going to delete that. So I'm going to go to create polygon tool. And I'm going to just start drawing this in. So I just made one. And if I hit G, I get, repeat the same command, and I can hold V for vertex snap and click, and then let go and draw here, and then hold V to close it. G again, hold V. So I'm just drawing in, oops, sorry, I'm just drawing in, hold V to snap to this vertex here and close it off. Uh, I'm just drawing a polygon uh, along the line of this curve here. And so right now we have one, two, three, four polygons that have one face. Okay, so that's one way that we can begin to start specifying directionality or, uh, you know, when we look later with image planes, you'll understand why we'd want to start with an approach like this. However, this ends up giving you a lot of different polygons instead of one polygon uh, with X number of faces. So let me grab, I'm just going to put these in a layer as well. Just label it. A and I'm going to untemplate the curve and I'm going to just duplicate it over. Template it again. So if I go back up to mesh and create polygon tool and I'll start drawing in again. But instead of drawing the polygon one more time, I'm going to go to edit mesh and I'm going to do a pen to polygon tool. And what you'll notice about a pen to polygon tool is it's going to ask you for a boundary edge. So we're going to append a new polygon to this edge and we're going to specify the next vertex position. So you don't need to hold the vertex snap or anything. You just click on an edge and then you pick where the next polygon vertex is going to be and the next one after that. And you can hit W. You can hit G again to redo that command. Pick the edge. Hit G again. Pick the edge. Pick the next two. Hit G again. So you can start to see that this is not only a bit quicker, but it's also cleaner because it allows us to, at the end of the day, just have one polygon that has you know, what, two, four, six, eight, nine number of faces versus having to then select all of these and combine them. And if I go up to lighting and uh, turn off two-sided lighting, we can see the normals. You see that my normals are actually flipped. 
So we'll talk a bit about the cleanup aspect later, but for now you can select it and go up to normals and then reverse, and it will reverse them. See so here you'd have to then select all of these, go to mesh, combine, and then edit mesh, merge, and then normals, reverse. So with the create polygon tool, I'm going to go back up to plan. With the create polygon tool, you can uh, work with the append polygon tool as well to make this workflow a little bit quicker. Go ahead and shut. Put both of these now in a layer. I'm going to duplicate this one over. And the last way that we're going to look at is by going up to mesh, create polygon tools, and we're just going to create one polygon here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and untemplate these. And we're going to select this edge by holding right click and going up to edge. And we're going to shift select the curve. And I'm going to go up to edit mesh and just hit extrude. And so right away you notice it just kind of shoots from one point all the way to the end. And that's because we don't have any division set in. So we can go to our poly extrude edge node and go down to divisions. And if you just grab the divisions and hold the mouse, a middle mouse button and drag to the left or right, you can add number of divisions. So, you know, or you can come in, click and type 10 or 11, 12, however many you want. Uh, and we've now extruded this, this edge along this curve with X number of divisions. So this one's even faster way to go about uh, generating geometry and polygon geometry based on a specific direction or curves or reference image. Um, the history is linked between these two and you can tell when you select the curve it, the polygon turns purple. So we can go ahead and uh, delete, just go to edit, delete by type, history, sorry I haven't selected the wrong one, uh, edit, delete by type history of the polygon and it's going to delete the history to the curve. If we don't delete the history we can hover over the curve, hold right click and select the control vertices and we can now change the position of the control vertex of the curve and it's going to update uh, its position on the polygon as well. So it's, it's a very a very helpful thing to when you have history, but at the same time it can be a bit problematic when the history keeps piling on and piling on, on top of itself. Uh, you want to delete history when you don't need it. So these are three quick techniques on how to create uh, polygon geometry. And we're going to use this to then start building up in the next lessons uh, ways that you can start to, you know, if you use a reference image or you have a set of curves that are going to kind of guide the way you're going to build this polygon, uh, these are a couple of different ways you can go about doing it, as well as using the uh, polygon primitive technique. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at uh, how to begin to start editing some of this geometry with the edit mesh tab, and we'll start looking at some of these uh, coming up soon. See you then.